Hello and welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the first part of the Fujimi Ford GT40 1968 in 124th scale. If you're making the 1968 version, the fuel filler cap on the left hand side needs to be filled. This section here needs to go on the back of the rear cowling. It had quite a bit of flash and I found that Craft Knife was better at getting into these spaces. Then used some extra thin cement to secure that to the cowling. Held it in place for quite a while to make sure the fitment was good. There's some mould seams around the sides of the front here, across the uh, wings of the car, and then they go up to the roof line here. I used some UMP sanders to get rid of those, and also used a craft knife just to make some of these door openings in the roof a bit more obvious. The mould lines on the rear cowling are a bit worse. I used some of this Mr. White Putty R to fill in that space where the fuel filler cap went. Did the same on these mould seams on the boot. Let them dry for about a day and then used my UMP sanding sticks to sand them flat. I primed this, then gave them another sand and fill if needed. It was primed into me a light grey and then I gave it three coats of the Bermuda light blue Ford paint from Halfords. Now the orange decals I found didn't match up to the orange paint which I planned to use so I chose to measure the decals and mask the car instead. Here you can see how I've used a mix of paper and Tamiya 2cm tape. I gave this three coats of orange starting in very light mist coats. Pretty happy with how that looks. I then did the spare tire cover at the front and then I put it into place to measure up where the next lines would go. Now I photocopied the decal sheet and then used this to try to measure templates. Indicals do actually sell templates for this if you're interested. I found a circle on this circle cutter which measured the same as the curve of these uh, gulf stripes on the front and then used a very nice new sharp craft blade to cut the tape into the right shape. I then lined up that template that I used and I also found that this well done sticker which I give to my sons sometimes was the right shape for the white circle. Once that was all painted up I did the insides of the headlights and also the window trim around the front in semi-gloss black. I didn't do the insides of the fog lights though as even though the instructions tell you to the real car had these orange. I glued this cover in place. And then started doing some of the decals. In order to do these black stripes, I used the ruling edge here. And again, a very sharp new craft blade to cut out the black stripes as carefully as I could. This was pretty difficult. And I also had to be very, very delicate when putting them down because they were quite fragile, but I was pretty pleased with how they turned out. I made sure to position the uh, orange side on the inside of the uh, decals here in case any of the colour from the decals was still on after I cut them out, if that makes any sense. I used a micro set to put them down into place and then after they'd cured a little bit, after they'd set a little bit, went over with a bit of UMP Strong. It possibly would have been a better idea to cut this decal out before using it, but once I put it into the right place, I ran a craft blade along the edge. 
Now this was to make sure that I got the right size. This was very difficult to cut out very carefully. And then I used these curved nail scissors to try and trim them as close to the black line as possible. Again, put down some micro sets to start with to help the decals move around. Now I made a bit of a mistake here you doing trying to do this all in one go. When it came to the other side of the car, I actually split the decal up into three parts and it made this a lot easier. I found using a pair of tweezers and also a wet fine paintbrush was a good way of manipulating the decals gently. And eventually I was happy with the placing. See, as you can see this one, it's been cut into several parts. I had to be very careful using this craft blade, but it is good for small movements. Pretty happy with that. Then went with the number nine for the winning car from 1968. Now I may have put these white circles on the side a little far forward, but I think they came out okay in the end. Run a calf blade down the side to make the door opening look more clear. Pretty happy with that. There's then a few other sponsor decals. This being very early days of sponsorship decals appearing on racing cars. I'm pretty happy with the shade of orange that I chose. This is enamel orange paint from Wilco, just so you know, which is laid down quite nicely. When the decals had cured for a day, I gave the car four coats of satin clear from Halfords to give it that sort of race car finish. Now the window needed a black sunstrip at the top, and I found that using this circle cutter here, to create a sort of a, an arc in a, sort of these two centimeter masking tape was a really good way of doing this. Then positioned it in the middle, try and lay it down as flat as possible and just used some black acrylic. Looks really good, I think. The rear window trim needed to be black. So I did that on the inside of the bodywork like so. It's easier than working on the window itself because this way you can get exactly the right shape. There's then a few screws and things like that which need to be done in silver. This vent in the back was spray painted silver and then the window was glued into place with some foam safe super glue. There's some raised screw detail on the edges which shows you which way up it needs to go. Now the tail lights were done in Tamiya orange and red clear. Make sure you get them up the right way. The backs of them were done in silver to give a little bit of reflectivity. There's also this side marker which goes on the driver side. The instructions say it needs to be yellow but I've looked it up, it should be blue. I did the back of that in silver, the sides of it in black and the front of it in blue Sharpie, which gives a nice bit of reflectivity. There's a small circle that shows you where the rear view mirror needs to go. Again, I used a little bit of foam safe super glue to glue that into place. This window needs to go on the inside of the car, so it's important to get that done at the right time. I chose not to drill out the 
uh, vent here at the front, I was just worried about damaging the body, so I coloured that in with black acrylic. The screws on the bonnet were done in silver using a cocktail stick just to make sure that I don't put too much paint down. Same with the door handle. I sharpened the cocktail stick to a fine point to do the silver clips here to attach the bodywork. There's two little pins on the inside of the roof to show where this window needs to be glued. I added a little bit of silver to the back of these headlight lenses and then glued the light coverings into place. Make sure to sand the edges of these as I found that there was a little bit of flash on a lot of the clear parts. And there we have it, bodywork's all done. Next part I'll be working on the undercarriage and interior before putting it all together. Pretty happy with how this looks so far. This is a real sort of iconic car from the 60s. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon.